Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we'll be uh, putting a front side window into a 65 Pontiac GTO two-door sedan or sport coupe as they're called. Uh, the tools you'll need are some white grease, Phillips head screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, and a 17 16 socket with a ratchet or a wrench. Uh, this procedure is the same for any 64 to 72 GM A body as far as the window goes. Uh, obviously, different years, different, um, different models, the procedure for installing the door panel will vary. Okay, so here today we're working on our 65 GTO. Um, what happened is there's a track here attached to the window uh, and this, uh, this part of the track is spot welded to another piece of metal and the spot welds rusted out. So we took it apart, took this track off and then had it welded back on. Okay, and now we're ready to put the window back in. So, first thing here See, I've got my window, my door's all apart, there's no trim on the outside, my vent window is out, okay, my window regulator is still in. First thing I'm going to want to do is remove, there's a track on the inside of my window, okay, I'm going to remove this track so I can move my regulator around a little bit. So here I use a 7 16 wrench to just remove the two bolts that hold that uh, inner track on. And that allows me to move one of the arms of the regulator freely. Before I install my window, I'm going to take a good amount of white grease and put it right on along this track so everything slides nice and easy. Okay, now I'm going to take my window, put it on the outside of the vehicle, make sure that these uh, rollers are in good shape, which they are. Slide onto this first one, slide that forward, okay, then back onto the second roller, make sure it goes on. Okay, and once it's in this position, what I can do is kind of reach in here, put this back in place a little bit. Okay. As long as I'm holding onto this, it's not going to go anywhere. Let me just put a bolt on here. on here. Okay, they're not tight yet. And now push the window in a little bit and roll it down. Hold it up in place. You can actually slide it back into the rear channel. Slide it down. You want to have your bottom stop out and you want to put the window down as far as you can. And I can tell by this way that the window is kind of tilted here. This adjustment here tilts the window kind of back and forth and I can see where it was before. Do a little bit of a preliminary uh, adjustment. I want to have the window pretty much level in here. We'll more fine tune this when we're done later in the process. Let the window down. Again, kind of pushing it back, making sure it's in the track. Okay, so the window is down and it's back in the track correctly. And now with the window in, you're going to want to put your Outer molding back on. On this car it goes down on and then there are a series of little Phillips screws that go in and hold it. And I'm going to fast forward as I just put those screws in. Um, it helps if you put a little bit of glue on the tip of the screwdriver or if you have a magnetic tip screwdriver uh, that holds the screws onto the screwdriver while you put them into place and then tighten them up. Check to make sure that this bolt here is nice and tight. A lot of times they'll rust out and the threads will wear out. Okay. Put it down in. Okay, reach 
in. Make sure that the vent window's inside your window up in there. Okay. And just slide it forward. Side there. You can quick take your channel weather strip. It should have a basically a 45 degree notch out of it. Let's go right up in there. Now you want to use a long coarse thread screw to that goes through the uh, basically the sill and into the frame of the vent window. Okay, the screws for the uh, upper part of the vent window are kind of pan head and they're a fine thread screw. And here again, I'll fast forward as I put in those three screws that hold the top of the vent window. Okay, once you get the vent window in, the last bolt is down here, and this is an adjustment. Um, it adjusts the track back and forth. When you turn it clockwise, you bring the lower part of the track closer. Counterclockwise, it's further away. You basically just want to reach in there, pinch, kind of make sure that the door is not, or the window is basically right in the center. I'm going to move the track away a little bit. Okay. Then you just have a nice big flanged bolt and washer. Put it right on there. Use a 7 16 wrench and just watch, make sure that this doesn't turn at all as you're tightening it up. Okay. So now your window should go up nice and free. Okay, now I'm rolling the window up and you check the gap at the top as it closes. The back is closing a little sooner than the front. So I'm going to loosen up this, okay, and I'm going to drop this down until it's nice and even, hold it, just kind of work it back and forth a little bit, okay, tighten it up, bring it up, alright, looks good, I'm bring it down just a hair more here. Before you put the uh, door panel on, you need to put a water shield on. This is very important. Um, this goes and protects your door panel from the water. Um, not much water gets in here, but when it does, you don't want to get on the back of your door panels because the door panels are cardboard and they'll just deteriorate very quickly. Um, a couple of notes. You want to put a sealant on here, and this is kind of a, like a 3M strip caulk that I put on here. You can use any kind of a thick latex caulk. You don't want something, you don't want an adhesive, but you want something that will come apart later, but it's water, you know, waterproof. And very important, what you want to do is have it slope nice and gradual right down into here. That way if water does come through here, 
It has a nice path, even path, and goes down in. Uh, they didn't take a lot of care when they did these things at the factory, and sometimes you'll see it's you know kind of wavy and stuff. This car actually had a big um, kind of dip down here, so water could get held down there. And then the same thing over here. Make sure you have a nice gradual um, plane for the water to come right down and go into the holes here. So put this water shield on. You want to loosen your molding here. And I'll speed it up here. You loosen the five screws that hold that top molding in. Slip the um, water shield up in between the door, the inner door panel and that molding and then tighten those screws back up. That basically holds the top of the water shield. Um, and then you want to start sticking it to the caulking that you put on, on the front and rear, as well as make sure that the bottom goes down and into the slit that is along the bottom of the door uh, to direct the, any water back inside the door. Now you're ready to put the door panel on. Make sure you have these clips, three on the front, two in the back. Okay. There is a larger spring that goes on and you can actually kind of get it in behind and twist it on so it stays in place. Okay. And then put your door panel into place up into this molding. Okay, it should fit in there nice and snug. Okay, I'm just going to kind of look behind, make sure my clips are lined up pretty well. And then you have this little cone shaped spring. Reach up that here on the uh, the door pull section. Make sure these you want to make sure that the springs are lined up on your door panel. Okay, then just kind of guide your pins in place. You may have to just adjust them up a little bit. Now, if you're putting new panels on, you'll want a sharp tool like this because you'll need to be able to uh, find, and generally probably what you'll want to do is actually put the screws in the bottom in first. That way you can press the panel against the head of the screw and make a hole in the door panel. I'm just going to make sure my holes are lined up here, I'm pretty sure they are. Okay, I'm going to kind of fast forward and then explain what I meant. When you have a new panel, they don't come with the holes for those screws. Okay, basically, when these cars were put together at the factory, those screws were self drilling screws. So they just had a machine, they stuck the screws into the door panel, and then they drilled themselves into the metal and held the door panel. So if you want to put the screws in the same place that your car has holes, put the screws in, start mounting the door panel, and then um, once you get to this point, you press the door panel against the screw and you basically will make an indent where the Phillips head is and that's where you can put the hole in the door panel. So you take the door panel back off, make the holes for the screws, and then reinstall the door panel, um, obviously with the screws not in place, and use those holes. So uh, basically you'll probably want an awl or some type of sharp tool so that you can kind of line up the holes with the uh, holes in the door and then put the screws in. Now here I'm putting the armrest base on with the two large coarse thread Phillips uh, screws. Here again I'd recommend having um, a long sharp tool like an, an awl to locate the screw holes. Uh, actually the best bet is to get one in and then locate the screw hole um, on the other one and then press it in and then tighten them both up. And the handles, Let's make sure the clips are on. 
Okay, these little uh, basically bushings so they don't wear against the um, door panels. Push them on. Same thing here. Make sure the clip is on. Put on the bushing. Make sure one more time that the spring is in the right spot. And these things should go nice and straight. We hope this helps you out. Brought to you by www.1aauto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.